Hail and welcome back to another episode of Midgard Musings. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Jesse and I'm the host here on this channel. This is your first time checking me out. First of all, thank you so much. If you don't want to miss anything, be sure to click the subscribe button down below and the bell notifications after that so that you get notified every time that I upload new content. Uh, today's video is just going to kind of be a quick recap and a thank you especially to all of you who are watching today for helping this channel reach the level that it is. Um, I started this channel almost two years ago uh, to kind of bring about some knowledge of Norse heathenry, Germanic paganism, the things that I do day in and day out, um, and the things that I'm learning about and help share it uh, with everybody else on this platform. And um, my goal uh, for 2019 was to reach 2,000 subscribers by or before the end of the year, by the beginning of 2020. By January 1st, 2020, I wanted us to get to 2,000 subscribers. And I'm very happy and surprised to say that uh, not only did we surpass that, um, but we are actually quite far um, along past that. Today, as I record this video, the channel is at 2,134 subscribers. So not only did we crush the deadline, uh, we just totally raided the hell out of it and, and blew it out of the water. And I just want to say, for everybody that watches my videos every week and that you know stays in tune with what I do, I just want to say thank you so much for being here with me for the last couple years, for all the new folks that are coming on and learning about things. Thank you so much for commenting, sharing the videos, being interactive with them. It really helps with the growth of this channel. So thank you so much for helping us get to 2,000 subscribers and beyond before the end of 2019. Uh, let's see what we can do in 2020. Maybe we can get to 5,000 subscribers. All right, so today's video is just going to be kind of a fun uh, one that I thought I would do since this is going to be the last video of 2019. Um, I've seen some things over time, especially this year, that made me just go, what? You know, some of the things that people say or things that people consider that are synonymous with heathenry um, or, or, or things that we're connected with as heathens. Um, and I just go, you know, I guess they're just uneducated or they hear things themselves from other people and they just put some automatic, you know, assumptions on things. But this video is going to be my top five most misunderstood things that people label heathenry to or that give a label to heathenry or that somehow associate heathenry uh, today, at least the things that I heard. So once again, this is my top five most misunderstood things about being a heathen. Number five. We, as heathens, are devil worshippers. I don't know if you know what the term heathen is or what the term pagan is, um, but nowhere in paganism, nowhere within heathenry do uh, we have this devil figure that you speak of, that, that is not a creature in lore, that is not a, a god or a Jotun or an anything, at least within Germanic paganism and within a lot of the other pagan practices out there that don't just focus on Germanic heathenry. Um, but what, that we don't have such a thing to even worship or venerate, okay? Um, just because we do not follow the rules and the guidelines and the doctrines of your god, or goddess, or gods, or goddesses, whatever, um, doesn't make us automatically what you would label as a devil worshiper, because um, we don't even have a devil. We're not, we're not venerating anything like that. So, we are not devil worshipers. Heathens are not devil worshipers. If you really want to get down to that, and you want to label anything as a devil worshiper, you may want to consider rebranding it as what Satanists are. And even then, Satanists do not worship, at least some Satanists do not worship a figure as Satan. Um, it's a bit of more of a you know self-worship type of thing, uh, from my understanding. There's other types of things out there. That's not my area of expertise. I'm not going to talk about that. But, no. Heathens are not devil worshipers. Number four. We, as heathens, uh, just stay drunk all the time. We're all drunks and we're rowdy this and we're all, you know, you never find us without a drink in our hand. I mean, yes, but also no. So let's get one thing straight, guys and gals. You don't have to drink, consume, or even partake in any sort of alcoholic libations if you don't want to, if you choose not to, if it's healthier for you not to. 
and you can do so, you can abstain from all those things and still be a heathen, okay? Um, there are plenty of folks I know, some who are very highly esteemed in their heathen community, uh, and they don't drink, not regularly, not at all, um, in very small doses, if at all, maybe just for ritual, that sort of thing, but um, they are some of the best heathens that I know, some of the most knowledgeable heathens that I know, some of the most respectable, honorable heathens that I know, and they don't touch the stuff. So, no, just because we are heathens uh, doesn't mean that we stay constantly in a state of inebriation. You know, we're always drunk, we're always rowdy, we're always yelling, we're always hitting things, we're always tearing stuff up. Um, no, that is definitely not the case. As a matter of fact, um, I would say the majority of heathens I know um, live very peaceful lives, live very um, ordered lives, and have a really good set in, uh, of, of customs and, and, and things set in place in their personal lives that would um, totally go against what you would think as being the norm. So, no, we are not just a bunch of rampant drunks. Which leads me into the third one. Number three is that we're Vikings. You know, Vikings with the fur capes and the horned helmets and the axe and the mead and the dar -de -dar -de -dar whatever. We are Vikings. We listen to Odin, we listen to Thor, we hail the gods, we go on raids, we are Vikings! Alright, now as ridiculous as that may have seemed, um, I really think that a lot of folks out there think that because we wear a hammer around our necks and because we maybe have Norse tattoos or runes or whatever that uh, we think that we're Vikings. And maybe there are people out here who think they are Vikings themselves. And um, also no, all right? Because guess what guys, the Viking age, uh, those who were considered as Viking, um, that was something that was done as a sort of recreational, seasonal tr uh, hobby. Um, I say hobby, but it was like you had your day-to-day -day lives that you lived. You had, you were, you know, you farmed, you did, uh, you were a farrier, you were a blacksmith, you were, you know, uh, a seamstress or whatever. You, you did your thing to provide for your family, for your hearth, um, for your clan, for your tribe, and um, that was your livelihood. And then maybe, outside of those times, maybe during the spring or warmer months, you had to go acquire things that would make life easier and better and more, you know, thriving uh, for you in your community. So you went on raids, you went Viking, you went to go Viking, okay? You were not a Viking all the time, you were not a Viking because you lived in Scandinavia. You were not a Viking and you are not a Viking because you ven choose to venerate uh, Germanic gods and goddesses. Uh, you are Viking because you do the thing. You go Viking, you go on raids, you go on a ship, you sail across the sea and invade and raid and take things that aren't yours. So um, unless you fall into some of that category, which to me sounds a lot just like a pirate, okay, you're not a Scandinavian pirate. You uh, you don't get on a long ship and go across the sea and uh, take things that aren't yours. So um, no guys, we are not Vikings and anybody out here who thinks they are um, maybe needs to cut back a little bit on the LARPing. Not that I have anything against that, um, but there's that. So. Let's go on to the last two things uh, that I have on my list. Number two! Um, this is a funny one. I see this pop up quite a bit for some reason. Um, and that is that um, men, the male populace okay, of, uh, of heathen cultures, needs to have facial hair, needs to have a beard. And uh, the bigger the beard, the more of a heathen you are. You can't be a heathen without you know, uh, toting a beard, or even to the point of looking to, uh, you know, sort of challenge uh, policies and rules of either employment or uh, your areas of service that would refuse you to have a beard. Uh, you, you try to, I see people that are trying to fight those policies and procedures to allow them to have a beard because it's my religion, it's part of my faith is to have a beard. Um, not going to go into it greatly or deeply, but I can assure you um, that you have absolutely no basis or grounds of anything within lore. Uh, maybe not anything within lore, but you don't have anything to base it on as far as it's a religious requirement, okay? Because I can tell you right now, there are heathens out here who I know who are clean-shaven, uh, short hair, 
you know, look like, you know, if you were to throw a suit on them, uh, they would look like, you know, a CEO of a Fortune 500 company. Um, and they are some of the greatest heathens that I've come across and, and, and get to know. Um, so this whole thing, you know, the long hair, the facial hair, you know, the aesthetic or whatever, that's all it is, okay? There's nothing that makes you a better heathen because you have a great beard or, or you want to have a beard. And there's nothing for you to go on and say that, um, you know, this is, uh, this is a part of my religion. The beard thing, the facial hair, hair thing was a cultural or regional uh, thing you know it was it was seen a lot from various cultures uh, in that area and, and so it, be, it became sort of the norm uh, to see it so I think maybe in that aspect is where you get some of these people that think that they should be bearded they, uh, if you're a man you need to have a beard to be a heathen but um, you don't and you don't have anything it's not like um, in some other religions where the beard on a man is actually a part of their canon it's a part of their uh, doctrine to uh, for men to have beards it makes it becomes a very sacred thing um, it's not that way in, in uh, Germanic pagan culture so if you don't have a beard if you can't have a beard because of the re restrictions or requirements of your job or profession uh, don't try going down a rabbit hole and proving it to them that you can because of your religious views of whatever okay and lastly but certainly not least my number one thing that I see and have seen for quite some time, it's probably not going away anytime soon, and I'm just going to address it right now. The number one mi most misunderstood thing that I see about uh, our associations and, and heathenry is that you have to be of Northern European descent, you have to have some sort of Scandinavian DNA, ancestry, whatever, um, in order to be a Germanic pagan, in order to venerate the gods. If you do not have any sort of ancestral lineage to uh, Scandinavia or any of the Germanic countries uh, back then, you don't have any, um, you can't worship the, the Norse gods and goddesses. You can't be a part of this thing. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. This is a thing that I've seen for quite some time. I'm sure everybody that's on my channel, that watches my channel, has heard it or seen it and has probably even commented on other videos where I brought up this thing about you know the power of blood the power of DNA where does it really fit into our you know uh, into us as heathen modern times in, in modern times um, <clears throat> but let me just say this you know the, the biggest thing about heathenry uh, in, in a lot of other pagan cultures but in Germanic heathenry is ancestor veneration. You are honoring your ancestors on a daily basis. You are venerating your ancestors, sometimes on a more regular basis, even than the gods and goddesses uh, from our Lord. All right. So you should be able to venerate your ancestors no matter what pagan you are, no matter what kind of pagan you are. And um, I know I have plenty of ancestors who go back to other parts of the world who were probably pagan in their regional uh, lands of, of, of their you know nativity uh, for instance I have you know family from the Mediterranean from from Italy and um, I, I did not choose to you know follow a uh, you know a Roman pagan path or anything like that even though that that's probably more along the lines of what my ancestors on that side of my family were into um, I felt a draw and I felt a pull towards this path and um, choosing to to learn things about this uh, way of doing things so you do not have to be northern european you don't have to be german you don't have to be dutch swedish norwegian icelandic um, finnish or any other countries up in this area of the world that where these gods were venerated from you don't have to have any lineage or ancestral ties to those areas in order to practice heathenry you know might you get a stronger um you know, benefit from having ancestral ties to those lands, since this is where things kind of started from, that could possibly be, but you are not excluded from worshiping the gods or venerating the gods or doing anything when it comes to, uh, you know, the gods and goddesses of the Norse pantheon. You're not excluded from that just because you have little to no um, Germanic or Scandinavian bloodlines. And don't let anybody out here tell you otherwise, okay? I don't care who comes on to the comment section down below and tries to tell me that there's, you know, an obvious difference um, between, you know, the, the you know, I've, I've been called out here before about 
oh, you called me a racist because I'm a white separatist. Um, uh, and and I'm, not a, I'm not a nationalist, I'm not a racist, I'm a separatist, I'm a this, I'm a that. You know what, you're all, that's all garbage. That's all garbage. If you're a white separatist, white nationalist, white supremacist, anything like that, there's no place for you here on this channel, and you'll be booted. You can go spread that crap somewhere else uh, to other people that want to suck up that garbage. So, do not feel that you are excluded from heathenry um, just because you maybe fall under a different cultural demographic, all right? Um, follow what is in your heart, follow where you feel the, the, the natural pull is, is guiding you, um, and learn, constantly learn, always learn, don't ever stop learning. So that is today's video everybody, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you again so much for helping Midgard Musings reach to over 2100 subscribers in less than two years time. I got a lot more fun stuff planned for this channel, I can't wait to see where we all get to grow together here together. Uh, it's been an awesomely fun time. I enjoy these videos. I enjoy hearing the feedback from everybody. So thank you all again so much for your constant support. Hail and have a wonderful 2020.